Geographical advantages and cultural imports have permitted more to be accomplished within the British Isles than in many other parts of the world, but ultimately it was the British themselves who had to accomplish it. That they did so has had enormous consequences, not only for the inhabitants of the United Kingdom or even for past and present members of the British Empire or Commonwealths, but for the entire world. The highly varying degrees to which different segments of the British population acquired the necessary human capital demonstrates that the opportunity alone is not sufficient for economic or other accomplishments. Nor was it simply a matter of what the existing society permitted to different groups, for those same groups showed similar economic and social patterns when transplanted to other societies in North America or in Australia and New Zealand. British law and its traditions of impartiality made London a magnet for the capital of the world, enabling Britain to industrialize with other people's capital as well as its own. In a later era, the British colony of Hong Kong would similarly attract capital from around the world by the dependability and impartiality of its laws, while many poverty-stricken countries were unable to obtain much-needed capital because of their undependable laws and confiscatory policies toward foreign investors. British law was, of course, more than an economic asset. Its separation of powers and rights of citizens against the government were the foundation of the freedom of the British themselves. The revolutions of the 17th century, including the beheading of King Charles I in 1649 and the uprisings in 1688 that led James II to flee to France, made the separation of powers even more dramatically vindicated and an indelible part of the British Constitution. While many other countries copied British systems of law and government, those that succeeded in creating similarly free governments were largely those that came from the same tradition, the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, for the historical experiences that were distilled into powerful traditions were essential to the functioning of the legal and political institutions themselves. While these institutions could be copied by anyone, the history and traditions behind them could not be synthesized, and it was these intangibles that made the tangible institutions and structures work.